Come on, why don't you stand with me? Give our online audience a big God bless you. Come on, can we welcome them? Come on, can you put your hands together? God bless you. We love you guys. Thank you for watching. Want to let you know we have one of our pastors that's there to help you with any questions you have today. Open your Bibles, if you can, to 2 Timothy chapter 2, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, excited about today. It's been our, so far, it's been a fantastic morning in La Quinta, now here. It's been great. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, it says, Again I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord, watch this, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. How many know that's a good thing? And be able to teach. And be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we will never, never, never be the same. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. amen. You may be seated. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers will be more than happy to get you one. We have been in a, a series called You Asked For It. And what we did is that on Easter Sunday on all our campuses, what we did is we took... Um, and gave you a survey of 30 topics, and you actually picked your top six, and we took it and calculated it all, and what we did is that over the last few weeks, we've taken the top six questions you had, and I can't tell you how timely um, this series has been, and as I mentioned it on, on a Wednesday night, a few weeks ago, after Pastor Jeff spoke, I felt the urgency to get on stage and share with you how timely it was and, and to remind you that at the beginning of the year, our pastors get away and, and we kind of put together our entire sermon series for the year, and yet it was just a, a, a confirmation and a blessing that we're hearing the voice of God months and months before um, it actually came to pass. But we started off the series by talking about how to handle stress and we learned that the only thing you're supposed to carry in life is the cross of Christ. Anything else is uncomfortable. You're not, you weren't designed to carry stress or worry or anxiety. These are why these are uncomfortable feelings and those things come so that you can eliminate the cross that you're supposed to carry that will literally overcome those feelings that come in your life. And then we talked about the fact that why do bad things happen to good people? And really what we concentrated on was that word, why? Because another question you can ask is, why do good things happen to bad people? So it's not necessarily what we're asking, more it's about the why. And we learned that even in the toughest time that Jesus was facing in his own life, he had a why in his life. And then we talked about the fact that how do I share my faith with other people? And then... Pastor Billy, this past Wednesday, talked about the fact what happens when I die. And so today, I want to conclude this series, but I, what I believe every one of us deals with. We all know that God has called our lives, according to Joshua, a life that is going to be successful, that God has a future, Jeremiah says, filled with hope, and God has a destiny for our lives. And the thing about the Lord is, is he's a, a great God in showing us our future, showing us what's ahead of us. Like Joseph, let me show you at the age of 17 what your life's going to look like at the age of 30. God gives us dreams. He shows us visions. He creates these aspirations in our life to inspire others. And yet, what he doesn't show us often is the process, how we're going to get there. And yet, as most of you are leaders and some of you own your own companies and some of you manage people when it comes to your career, you're going to deal with difficult people. What you got to realize, first and foremost, is that God doesn't create difficult people. God creates beautiful people. 
if you and I are the shadow and Jesus is the substance, we model and mirror the majesty of our maker. We've been made in the image of God. God isn't difficult. Therefore, the person he created to emulate him wasn't made difficult. But what happens is, as Paul was telling Timothy, there are spirits or there are oppressions. There are attitudes that come upon people's life that turns a beautiful person into a difficult person. And yet, you and I, as we journey in our faith, got to learn how do we deal with difficult people. I remember being in pharmaceutical sales, that, that I would go into offices and visit doctors and visit clients and athletic trainers and, and, and therapists, and, and you always ran into difficult people. And here's what you got to understand, is that difficult people will either set you back Listen, or they will propel you forward. And what I've learned is that the church knows how to deal with faith. We know how to move mountains. We, we know how to believe in certain situations, but just in practical things that we can use every single day, it's almost as if we're oblivious to the fact of what the Bible talks about, how to deal with such attitudes when people come our way. You know, there are all kinds of different different kinds of difficult people. The, here, some of the examples is the first person is what I call that, the hammer person. You know that person that always comes and is like wanting to hammer you. You know what I mean? It's like you walk in and like they don't even say hi. They're just like, let me tell you. And you just kind of go off on you and stuff like that. And you're like, bro, you didn't even start off in first gear. You kind of just went for the gusto. It's like hammer people. I don't know if you've experienced those, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I've experienced those people. Um, the next kind of example of a, of a difficult person is a megaphone person. You know, somebody who's always like yelling. You know what I mean? They just, you just know they're going to yell. And it's like you're this close to them. You know what I mean? And you're like, hey, I, I'm not way over there. And they raise their voice and all of a sudden they boil up and, and ah, they start going nuts on you. And you're just like, I don't know if I should uh, think you're just a total freak or if I should love you at this time, and most of us would think they're a total freak. So, so I mean, they're, 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 just, they're, just, they're just miserable per people that just want to take it out on you. Here's another good example of a, of a difficult person. I call them bubble bursters. You know, those are the people that you're like, you have an idea, you have a dream. You're like, man, I woke up this morning, I think I got what it takes to take our company to the next level. And you go to them and they're like, yeah, it's not going to work. And you're like, oh my God, dude, you don't understand. I prayed about it this morning. I even got a yes from God and I come to you and they're like, we burst your bubble, you know? I mean, those are, I call those dream killers. Come on, can we be honest? Um, I call them, I call them um, haters. You know, almost like sipping on haterade. It's like, I think you drank the wrong thing this morning. Um, you should have drank Gatorade, but you drank haterade. And uh, I just think the reason why you don't like the idea is because it came from me. Wow. Have you ever felt that way? That if it was someone else's idea, they would have said, oh, that's so brilliant. But because it came from you, it's like, uh, let me burst your bubble. Oh, these are my next person that's difficult. These are hotheads. Have you ever met a hothead? I mean, it's like, it's like, it's, 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 it's like you can never talk to them without them getting mad. And it's almost like you're afraid to bring up something. <laughs> like, wives, stare at me right now. It's okay. You know what I mean? So, but you know, you're like, like, you're like, you, 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 you're like I really want to talk to you, but I can't. And the reason why I can't is because you're probably going to take it the wrong way, and then you're going to get all mad, and then you're going to blow everything up, and, and, you know, we're going to have to spend more money on repairing the walls that you just punched or whatever, right? So, difficult people. Oh, you, th this is another good example of a difficult person. This is a person that's... Um, like in outer space. Have you ever talked to someone and they're, they, they're telling you by the way they're looking at you that they're not paying attention? And then like you're in this deep conversation and you're like crying and everything and you want sympathy and then all of a sudden you're like, um, so, so what do you think I should do? And they go like, why don't you just go for it? And they're like, you didn't even listen to me. I was crying. And I mean, you don't, you don't, even, you don't even care. And, and they're just like, whoo, they're in outer space. You know what I mean? Like their mind's in orbit. Um, 
yeah. What about these ones? Um, whispers. You know, like, like, you know they're talking about you. Like, you know it. You walk in and they just they play the role. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, how you doing? And you're like, oh, you are overworking it, which means you've been talking behind my back. Come on, am I right or wrong? And they're like, and, you're, and, and then, then all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know, you haven't really, you know, included me in on some of the things that are happening. I just want to know why. And you're like, uh, look at my back. You got a bunch of knives from your house on that, right? You just know they're like gossiping about you, talking about you, or, you know, like you talk to them, they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. And then they like tell you, oh, well, I, I knew before. You're like, how did you know? Oh, well, so-and-so told me. You're like, I just went to dinner with her yesterday, and she just cried and told me how much she's praying for me. Whispers, yeah. Oh, these, these, this is a good one, too. Another difficult person to deal with, nitpickers. Nitpickers. I mean, these people, literally, they will like, they will, you can be 99% right, and they will concentrate on that 1%. I mean, they'll be like, oh, yeah, but, um, Oh, yeah, this is, this is a good one right here. Good one. Whiners. The whiners, right? Here's what I learned. I've learned this. Listen. Whiners are not winners. Let me rewind that. Whiners are not winners. I mean, it's like you're always whining. You're always complaining. It's, when it's hot, it's too hot. When it's cold, it's too cold. You're whining about everything. Like nothing's perfect. Like, they always find something wrong to complain about. You know, like those complainers? Yeah. I know some of you are looking forward. You're like, oh, my God. You're describing the person 100% behind me. No, I'm joking. You know what I mean? But, but oh, oh, this is my favorite right here. This is my favorite difficult person to deal with. Trash diggers. I mean, it's like, I, I'll never forget, I, I, I'll never forget, I, I ran into somebody, and, and I was like, hey, man, I, I, I haven't seen you in church. I, oh, well, I don't go to your church no more. I'm like, oh, well, well, what happened? Well, you know, five years ago, when you were at the store, and uh, you walked right past me, you didn't say hi. And I'm like, five years ago, and you left the church two months ago. Like, really, you're going to dig all the way back then? You know, they always want to bring up the stuff you buried. You know, you could be, like, arguing. You, know, you could be talking about something. You're like, yeah, I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to do this. I, I really want to go for my goal. I want to really fulfill the dream that I have for my life. And they're like, oh, it's not going to happen. And you're like, why is it not going to happen? Well, you tried to do something 10 years ago. And you're like, wow, you're digging trash. I mean, people just don't understand that God is a recycling God. That literally the bottle that you're drinking from today has a label that says this is a product that has been recycled. Why is that giving you the satisfaction of quenching your thirst when just a few months ago it was thrown into the trash and it was crushed, but because it went through a recycling plant, it had been reshaped and reformed, and now all of a sudden what people thought as trash, now you take that as a treasure. And that's why you can never, ever, ever curse someone's past. You can't sit there and talk about something and somebody when God, who's the God of recycling, who recycles our life and replenishes our life, because one day you're going to need what they have. And so the problem with dealing with difficult people is the fact that they see things different than us. You, you roll at a different altitude. You, you fly at a, at, at a different height, and, and they don't see the way things you see. You're seeing things through the Word of God. You're seeing things through, through your Christian faith. You're seeing things through love, and you're seeing things through fruitfulness. You, that's, that's what you're seeing everything through, but, but they, they have a different perception, and here's what you have to understand, that their perception shapes their attitude. And so, therefore... They're, they're going to do it, and, and the kind of difficult people um, that you deal with see things in a different way. You got, you got some, some difficult people that I call reading glass people. You know, they, like, don't wear their glasses right. They wear them, like, right here. 
and it's like they're looking at you and then they look down. Have you ever noticed that the glasses are always tilted down because they want to get a closer look when you're down? Like they see you through a different lens when you're standing and then they change their vision when you're down. See, they try to, like, they, they read into stuff. You know, like when you're talking and they try to finish the sentence, but you weren't even headed in that direction? It's like they read into you, and, and it's like they're trying to figure you out when you're, when you're like, look it, I'm, I'm revealing everything to you. There's nothing for you to figure out. You're reading into the situation too much. You're trying to see a conclusion, yet you're not even the author of this story. It's like you got those difficult people in your life. They've already labeled you what your end should look like. And maybe where God, where the enemy put a period, God turned it into a comma. And they're just kind of like, this is, this is who you are. And you're like, no, you're reading into a situation that's not even the situation anymore. You need to really take off those glasses because you're really spending a lot of time reading into the wrong thing. Those are people out there like that. Oh, these are the people I call the layered glasses. These are people that see everything in layers. You know what I mean? Like they deal with one thing and then the next thing they bring another problem to you and then the next day they have another problem and then the next day they have another problem. And it's just almost like you're just like, okay, every day I'm going to deal with you because you have a problem. Because if there's not a problem, they'll, they'll, they'll find a problem. Come on, they're layered people. They see, they see everything in layers. You know, they, they do, oh, th this is my favorite people because... We got a lot of difficult people like this. I call them big glasses people. These are the people, watch this, these are the people that magnify something that's so small. You're like, um, we, for just, we just forgot to turn the air conditioning on uh, when we left. And they're like, they just magnified into the biggest problem in the world, like it's World War III, you know what I mean? And it's like Jesus is coming back. And we, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's like, it's like they, they just take something so small, and they always want to magnify. they like master exaggerators. And you're like, you're worried over something that's really not even that big. And these are the kind of difficult people. And this is the way they perceive things. And, and so as a believer, you have some choices on how you respond. One of them would be that you'll curse it. But I want you to understand something, that you can't bless and curse at the same time. And so, and so you, you got you to gotta figure out a, a different way because that was the old you. It's not the new you. It's not the person who you are today. But, but most people land up getting into the trap of being trapped in that difficult situation by that difficult person that all of a sudden we stop blessing and we start cursing. And, 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 and so once you curse it, listen, you'll move on to the next one and you'll, you'll nurse it. You know, this is when you go from being like, the victor to being a victim, and you're like, I just can't believe it. I mean, they don't even understand everything I've done for them. I've done this for them. I've done that for them. And you're just nursing a wound. You're bandaging it up. You're, 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 you just put a Band-Aid over it. You're, you're nursing it. Listen, nothing ever gets healed what you nurse. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta get past that because the problem is, is that the enemy wants you to fall into the trap of dealing with this difficult people or this difficult person and you're allowing their dysfunction and their perception with the kind of attitude they have to lower your life down to that level and begin to think the way they think and all of a sudden now you curse it listen what happens is you nurse it and then listen this is when it gets worse man is when you begin to rehearse it and here's the problem with rehearsing stuff when you begin to rehearse things in your life here's what happens all of a sudden, you begin on to take on a different character than who you are. Come on, we do that. They're called ride home. You know, when we're driving home, we're rehearsing the whole situation. It's like we're, we're, we're pressing rewind. And we remember when they walked into our office and they came in with an attitude. And you're like, man, I should have told them this. I should have told them that. I should have did this. I should have did that. You know, you're rehearsing it. And here's the problem. All of a sudden, these emotions start boiling up inside of you. And now all of a sudden, you're like 
slapping your steering wheel and you know you're like talking to them like they're in front of you and next thing you know all the spits in the front of your windshield and you're pressing your windshield but nothing's being swept away because the spit is in the inside of your windshield and I mean you get home and they're and your husband's like how's your day it was fine don't bother me right now what happened you just you kept on rehearsing it the more you rehearse your pain and your problems the more you'll become that character. Because you don't become what you don't rehearse. And usually the people who rehearse are actors. And all of a sudden you're acting out in a different character than the character God created you to be. And this is why, listen, you can't curse it you can't nurse it, you can't rehearse it. What you have to do is you have to reverse it. And you have to sit there and you have to decide, this isn't me. I'm not belittling myself and I'm not gonna give in to the dysfunction of what's going on when I know I serve a God that's bigger than this situation. When God's created me in, in, and I've been fearfully and wonderfully made, listen, I'm not going down that path anymore. And let me tell you something, difficult people, will bring the worst out of you when the whole time God is trying to bring the best out of you. And you got to realize, hey, what do I do? Pastor Obed, what is the biblical way on how I deal with difficult people? Listen, the first thing you got to understand, what's the first biblical way to do it? Number one, listen, you got to realize you cannot please everyone. I mean, listen, the day you sit there and you say, man, I am no longer going to be a people pleaser. I'll never forget, man, early on in ministry when I was traveling and I was an evangelist and, and it was one of those things when you were an evangelist, it was almost like a one hitter quitter. You had to like go into a church. You had to blow it up. I mean, you had to preach your best sermon and, and you did it because you wanted people to get saved. But, 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 but also you, you wanted to be invited back. And, and, uh, and I remember as a young evangelist, man, I lived with this pressure. Oh, God, let them love me. All this. And I'll never forget, man, I was, I was in South Carolina. I was with a pastor that had been in ministry for 51 years. And I'll never forget this conversation we had. And he says, Obed, I, I want you to know, and this was, this was one of the largest churches at that time in South Carolina. I mean, it was just a miracle that I was there. And, and he says, right before we went on stage, he says, hey, I just want you to know we're inviting you back next year. Next year. And I, well, Pastor, you didn't, you didn't even hear me preach. He says, no, no, no. No, I, I, I've, I've listened to your tapes. You know, tapes. <laughs> kind of let you know how. Tapes. I, I've listened to your tapes. And, and, and he said, uh, he said can, I, can, I, can I give you one advice for ministry? You're going to go somewhere. I'm going to give you one advice. I said, yes, sir, 51 years, I'm all ears. He says, make sure when you get on the stage, you already have an amen from heaven. So you're not moved by the amen from the audience. So I, 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 I've taken that same principle in my life. I wake up every day, and as long as I have breath, when my eyes open up in the morning, and I, my eyes open up, and I, and I, I take that, I breathe, it, 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 it's settled, it's done. God has permitted for me to live another day of my life. I got purpose, I got destiny, I got it in my life. Listen, no one's going to change that. No one can dictate that. You got to wake up every day. I got an amen in my spirit. Today's going to be a wonderful day. Why? This is the day the Lord has made and I'm going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, we as Christians should never wake up to a bad day because a bad day isn't a bad day by God, it's a bad day by choice. And we've chosen to give in to what someone's calling bad when God's created everything that is good. And you and I got to get to this place when we wake up in business every day. This is going to be our best week. It's going to be the most sales we'll have. I got an amen in my spirit. Oh, you got to help me today. The day you start pleasing people is the day you stop pleasing God. 
I was a youth pastor, man, and when I was a youth pastor, I used to see all these young people get on fire for God, and, and they're like, Pastor Obed, man, I'm on fire for God, and, and then, man, I'd always get worried when they would come to me and say, well, Pastor Obed, would you, would you, just, would you just believe with me that I'll find the, the right girlfriend or the right boyfriend for my life, and I'm like, oh, God, help me, Jesus, <laughs> because then they'll hook up with someone in church, and it would be good for the first two or three weeks. Young people, listen to me. It'd be good the first couple weeks. And then all of a sudden, you're no longer in church anymore. And then you got this perception that you think you can save them. But the Bible's clear about that. And, and, and it's almost like you think, you know, I, I, I worry when single people tell me, well, I'm strong. No, 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 no. Listen, when you're strong, he's weak. I'd rather stay weak so that he's always strong in my life. I'd rather always stay vulnerable, always humble in the presence of God, knowing that, that, that God is, is strength, is my source of strength every day. Not my strength, but his strength. And, and, and here's what happens. What happens is, is that, listen, single people, you, you, you begin to drift away a little bit. And the reason why you do is because you want to please them. And when you start pleasing man, you stop pleasing God. God has to stay the center in everything. Man, God prospers your business. God prospers you. Some of you are so shocked by your success. Some of you are so shocked, like, Pastor Robert, I can't believe God is blessing us so much. What do you mean you can't believe? It's in the word. He wants you to live a life of abundance. He wants you to live a life that's prosperous. No, here's what you got to understand. It's not, it's not the fact that God's going to bless me. What I have to work on is how do I stay blessed? And see, the thing is, is that we can allow abundance to come our way. We can allow prosperity to come our way. And we don't even realize that could be the very thing the enemy uses to take you away from the things of God to the point that you love the things more than you love God himself. And that's why the Bible says, watch this, Matthew 6, 33, seek first his, come on, his what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then watch this, comma, watch this, comma, pause. He says, then all these things. Don't tell me God is not into your things. God knows the things that you desire in your life. He knows what, what things you, you, you want. Oh, God, if you could just get us a boat. Oh, God, if you could get us this. Oh, God, if we could just have a vacation. God is into your things, but he's more interested in him being first. And so, and so here's, here's what we got to do. We got to sit there and realize, listen, we got to sit there and realize, I can't please everybody. I can't. Look what Jesus says in John chapter 5. It says, by myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear and my judgment is just for I seek not to watch it, for I seek not to please myself. But him who sent me, I was, I was telling my wife, we were having a conversation a few weeks ago and I said, honey, what do you do when you have everything? What do you do? When you can just wake up and, hey, I'll, I want to go have breakfast here. I want to go have dinner over here. What do you do? Most of us have been conditioned to survive. The church has to get to the place where we're reconditioned to thrive. And that the blessings of God will not create more of me, but it will create more of we. That God, I'm nothing without you. It's not about this. More than it's about you. You got to learn, listen, you can't please everyone. Number two, you, you got to refuse to play the game. Because most difficult people are good people with a difficult attitude. And what they want to do is they want to include you in this game. And you got to sit there and realize, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. I'm not getting into this game. You know, think about, think about the games that they played on Jesus. I'll just bring you one, I'll give you one scenario. Jesus comes and sees this, these people and, and these rulers, these religious people, church folks, you know, Religious church folks, they, they, they come to Jesus and they, they drag in this woman. Like, like, and they said, they said, this girl was caught in the act of adultery. And so, you know, Jesus don't say nothing. He's just like chilling, right? And, and, then he, and then they go, 
Watch this. Here's, here's what they say. Listen to this. He, they didn't say, what would you do? They didn't say that. Because religious people always try to throw in that, that jab. You know, like, and they said, the law of Moses. You know, your church, you're a Christian. What would you, the law of Moses says if one is caught in the act of adultery, they're to be stoned to death. And like Jesus like bends down, begins to write all kinds of stuff, you know, and time, you know, he's probably, you know, I don't know what he's writing, but he's right. And then, then he looks up and he goes, well, he without sin cast the first stone. <laughs> they dropped a stone. You know what's interesting about that story? Is that there's, they only presented Jesus half truth. Because the last time I checked it, it kind of takes two. And all they did was bring the woman. They're like, where the man at? Didn't he have to be a part of it too? You know what's amazing about difficult people with difficult, I mean beautiful people with difficult attitudes? Usually they try to trap you with half-truth. It's, it's not the whole story. And they're not trying to look for an answer more than they're trying to trap you. And, and, what, and what you got to realize is that you're bigger than the game they're trying to play. You know, Jesus said it this. Look what he says in, in, in John 2. He says, but Jesus didn't trust them. Because he knew all about the people. In other words, he says, listen, you guys ain't trying to find truth. You're trying to trap me. And you got to understand that in leadership and in management positions that you're in, watch this, people, employees will come just to trap you. You know, we have a lot of people that attend our church that are in government. And Lissette and I are always praying for the seven mountains of influence. We just have, in, you know, we believe we're a church of influence. And in um, and our nine o'clock service, um, one of our guys who was the city manager for Desert Hot Springs, as you probably read in the paper, um, on the news, you know, resigned. And, um, and all these different officials, whether it's mayors or different, you know, guys like that, I, I meet with them every other week. And literally, just, just, walk with them and they'll ask me and, and say man could you could you walk this out with me and 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 uh, and so um, it happened on Tuesday and, and he called me and he says uh, I'm in my office I think I think it's something's gonna happen and I said you know it's all good Lord's in control anyways we met yesterday and, and I'll tell you um, that when he took office a year and a half ago, Desert Hot Springs was on the verge of bankruptcy. You know, those of you that live in Desert Hot Springs, you finally got some money in your bank account right now. Okay, I want you to know that in 12 years, you never gave anybody a raise. He gave everyone a 4% raise across the border, including city council. I want you to also know that it's the first time in the history of Desert Hot Springs that they passed a two-year budget plan not a one-year, a two-year budget plan. So why did he resign? Come on, go back to number two. Why did he resign? I don't want to get, I refuse to play the game. My character is much bigger than my position. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me, somebody. Because you're willing to walk away from something that compromises your character, you watch God open up a bigger door for your life. And what you got to realize, listen, what you got to realize, when your life is destined for success, which means you were in your mother's womb, formed you, made you, stamped success on your life, nobody can detour it, nobody can cancel it out, nobody can forfeit that. Listen, as long as you seek first 
the kingdom. And when you seek it, God will add all these things on your life. Listen, there's going to be traps that are going to come your way that you got to have a discerning spirit and say, nope, I'm not going to play that game. That game is for little kids. I used to do that when I was in the world, but I am going somewhere because my life is destined for the success that God has for my life. People, are, people will, will do that. Why? Because all they want to do is point. Let me point the finger. Some of you are going to have business partners. You're going you're gonna to connect with other people. And, and you don't even realize when it's all said and done, even though your heart's right, sometimes they can be overcome by an attitude that will try to bring difficultness to the situation. And you got to trust in the Lord. And what you have to do, number three, is you got to rise above it. You got to rise above it. Look, 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 what Bible, look what the Bible says. I love this. <laughs> but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mine up with wings like what? Come on, like what? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here, here's the thing. I, I love how God describes us in the Bible, you know, you and I as believers. Like he, 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 he describes us one time as, uh, he, decides, he describes us, excuse me, one way like, okay, we're fish. Like he tells the disciples, Oh, no, drop your nets. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So he describes this as fish. Kind of later on, he uses kind of a different description of, of us. He, he calls us sheep. And he left the one, the 99, and he, and he goes after the one. And then, and then another way he describes us is through Isaiah, he says, you're eagles because you, you soar above What's at your level? You live at a different altitude. Your perception is different. Your insight is great. And the devil knows you're an eagle. But he brings difficult people your way to turn you into a chicken. And some of you look crazy acting like a chicken Monday through Friday, and then coming to church and soar like an eagle. You gotta be an eagle all the time. You gotta sit there and realize, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming down to this level that you're trying to bring me to. No, I'm not a chicken. Come on, I'm an eagle. I'm supposed to rise above the situations that are coming my way. I'm not afraid of a mountain. You ever ask an eagle, are you afraid of a mountain? He'll laugh at you and say, I'm not afraid of a mountain. I've got the ability to soar above those things. you got to realize nothing that comes your way can stop you from what God has for you. You know, you, you, you got to rise like an eagle. You, 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 you know, you, you, you know, got to got to get above and so and so watch this number four you you, you never retaliate you, you never retaliate like what what's the purpose of that like if you know there's haters out there well you live with it look what the bible says the bible says this in first peter 3 it says don't repay evil with evil don't retaliate with insults when people insult you like it says instead pay them back with the blessing like, that's so hard. Like, it's easier to read than to do. It's like, okay, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And then it happens to you, and you're like, oh, my God, heck no, I ain't blessing them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's been times in my life where I felt like, how can I? They're saying, I'm not that person. Like, why would they say that? Like, oh, God, I the spirit of a sock wants to come on me right now. <laughs> I need to resist this. And the Lord's like, bless him. Bless him, bless, bless what? And then I'm in prayer. I'm like, oh, God, I love you, Lord. Oh, any tongue that would rise up against me shall fall in seven directions. Oh, when, this, when the enemy cometh like a flood, the Spirit of God raises standard up against him. Oh, and the Lord's like, bless him. I'm like, oh, are you being funny, Lord? And oh, yeah, God. Oh, God, protect me. Uh, 
protect my heart, bless him. <laughs> You're being hilarious, God, and uh, bless him. And I'm like, um, I, I, um, I, ba, ba, I, 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 okay, I, I can't even do it right now, you know. Have you, you feel that way. It's your natural humanistic feelings. But something happens when your spirit soars above it and blesses them. And all of a sudden, the windows of heaven open and the Lord blesses you. And friends, if we're going to look for the blessing that God has for us, when that difficult situation from that difficult attitude from that difficult person caused, it's not going to take, it's going to take for us to bless them. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll bless them in a different way, but I'll bless them, right? <laughs> Listen, number five, you got to release them. You got to release them. Listen, as I close, this is the thing, and you got to realize this. I think one of the greatest breakthroughs I ever had in pastoring is knowing this. I can't change anyone. Like, I, mean, I know you guys come to me, you know, all these, Pastor Obed, you changed my life. And I'm like, ha, I can't. Yeah, you know, you changed my life. And I'm like, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Thank you, it flatters me, but I can't take credit for it. No, no, no. Here's the thing, you can't change that person, but here's what you can do, you can release them, and you can release them back into the hands of their creator. You know, you're not going to take a, a Toyota when it breaks down to a Ford dealership because they're not the creators, which means they don't, they don't know how it works. They have an idea, but they didn't create it. It's amazing that when God gave dominion to man, he wasn't reluctant to give us dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, every creeping creature. But he left one thing out. He says, the one thing I'll never give you dominion over is man. Because, if, because you can't change them. Only I can and friends, you can't put these difficult people in the hands of God when you're still holding on to them and the hurt, the brokenness. You've got to release them. And when you release them is when you'll begin to live, number six, redemptively. In other words, my life has been redeemed. How can I hold on to something that he was willing to change? Ephesians 4 says, instead, be, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ Jesus, has forgiven you. Listen, I get it. We're all in this boat together. I get it. We all deal with difficult people. And oftentimes, they come at the worst time. But now that we know, we're prepared. Here's what we have to do. We got we to gotta release them. Somehow, some way, find the strength to forgive them. God will deal with them. Allow him to deal with you. Today, they're not here. Let's hope. But you are. And before we can look for change in them, let's look for change in us. 
Maybe there is some things I, I need to, to let go of. And is it, could it be possible that maybe they, through this situation, has revealed something that you didn't even know was lingering around you that you need to let go of today? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do, and I've done it in all of our services. I'll do them in the rest. The thing that I understand is that as long as I'm a pastor of a thriving, growing church, I'm going to deal with difficult people. But difficult people are beautiful people that's just been overcome by difficulties in situations. I got to guard my heart, and so do you. And so I want you at this time, I'm going to pray, and then Pastor Brian's going to come and conclude the service, but I'm going to ask you to put your hands on your heart. And here's what I'm going to pray. Here's what we're going to pray over your life right now. Watch this. I'm going to pray that God guards your heart, but most importantly, I'm going to ask you that your eyes will not be from your head, but will be from your heart. That even in the difficult seasons of difficult people, they're beautiful people, overcome with difficulty. Lord, I pray all of us in this place have been affected. We've also been infected by difficult situations from difficult people that are really in your eyes beautiful people that you created. Help us to see beyond what's being said, the attitudes, the bubble bursters, the magnifiers. God, help us to stay focused on you. And Lord, if there's anything in our lives that right now we, we need to let go, we need to forgive, Lord, we release them to you right now. Come on, just in your still small voice, wherever you're at, no one needs to hear you, say their name. Lord, I release Janet. Lord, I, I release Bill right now. I release them to you, God. I can't change them. Only you can. Lord, I release them right now in the name above every name.